during the campaign. I think you remember that campaign. He said, what do you have to lose? Yeah. Well, with this White House, we have a lot to lose. Yeah, I, I remember, and, and you and I did talk about that. He called me after he won, mm -hmm. invited to meet me to meet, and I told him I wouldn't come for a photo op. It had to be a serious meeting with other leaders. And you called me, and I said, I'm a Rosa. I'm not going to be a prop. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And he tried to get you to convince me to come. So he talks one thing, yeah, and he... all Shopton's a con man, all that, and, and privately, get him to do this, get him to do that. But it's all it's stage crap. It's not serious. Yeah, see, he's a performer. He wants to use people as props. He did tell me, get Sharpton on the phone. I want to sit down with him. He said that privately, but publicly he was trying to use you to get people to go against the yep. advocacy work you were doing or even to go against the Democrats. So your instincts were right. I did call on you because I did need to have some backup. But I think what they quickly realized at the White House, they felt like, okay, if the black community is against her, then we can undermine everything that she's doing. So I was fighting on it inside and i understood why african americans may have been concerned about me being there but i think once you look at what i've talked about about my journey in unhinged they'll realize that i truly was getting tackled by my teammates every single day in that white house yeah that's one of the chapters tackled by your teammate let me ask you is the new york times right do you have more tapes more videos more emails is there more there Absolutely. I have this huge um, kind of 15 year record with Donald Trump and I'm very good at documenting my life, documenting things that happened, but particularly things that were peculiar to me. And, you know, I think that I showed when I shared that tape of General Kelly when he took me in the basement of the White House into the Situation Room, had I not had that tape rev then i think it'd be very hard for people to believe that i was threatened by this four-star general with things getting ugly for me or damage to my reputation it was very important because in trump world everybody lies i mean it's a culture of deceit people turn on each other very very quickly and you have to have documentation for everything that you do even trump in the morning, he may say one thing. By the afternoon, he's flip-flop. He's all over the place. And so the question about whether I, or not I do, absolutely. I have this vast historical knowledge and relationship with Donald Trump, 15 years. And I've been very good about documenting the evolution of that relationship, which is what I put in my book, Unhinged. Will any of it be of interest to special investigators like Mr. Mueller? Yes, you know, I talk about um, having a meeting with him and I share whatever they need, anything that, of interest that I've already shared, anything new that I've revealed. I am fully cooperating with them. I think it's important to... You are, the cooperating, with the the you are uh, cooperating with the Mueller investigation. Yes, I'm so sorry my earpiece is popping out. Yeah. Um, I am... And, and you're you willing to, to, to hand over to them anything that may be helpful, even if it's cooperating some things you may not know that they need a missing piece. Oh, absolutely. I've turned over, I, I will turn over all of the things that they need, but I will turn over additional things that I've discovered as I've gone through the two years on the campaign. And so I'm here and willing to serve and continue the dialogue that I started with them this spring. Now, what do you think about the uh, New York Times story this morning uh, saying that the White House counsel McCann has had all of these hours of talk with them? Do you think there's a potential for he and others to say, wait a minute, I'm not taking the fall for Donald Trump here? It doesn't surprise me. You know, Don McGahn is a professional, and his commitment is to the country, not to Donald Trump. I think it's important for all of us to realize that when we took that oath, and Don McGahn was an assistant to the president just like me, and we all took the same oath, but we took the oath to this country, to the Constitution, and we did not take an oath to Donald Trump. Let me ask uh, this. In terms of diversity in the White House, uh, I've been in this, as you know, a long time in civil rights. I can't think of a president, even Republican from Nixon on, that didn't have a black in the West Wing in at least the discussions, in the senior uh, uh, administrative leadership until now. 
you were the most public face there. And even there, they didn't have, they, they didn't want you in a lot of the meetings that you insisted to be in as That's I read right. the book. He's the first president that has outright excluded. He can call me and other activists a racist all he wants. He's the only one with a lily white inner circle. Am I right? You're absolutely correct. And it's much, much worse than people even realize. There's 30 assistants to the president right now. There are none representing the African American community. There are SESs as well as Schedule Cs that make up the bulk of the appointments to each of the agencies. And the diversity in the agency is very sparse. And in fact, when we submitted candidates, they were rejected over and over again. And I will tell you that they haven't even made an attempt to replace anyone in OPL to do the African American outreach. They just kind of detailed a guy over for just three months, I think, to do a little window dressing. But there is really no real commitment to diversity in the White House. And he's unapologetic about it because he's completely contradicted the, co the commitment he made when he did that campaign of what do you have to lose? Well, clearly, we have to lose a voice, an advocate, someone who understands the issues and knows how to reach out to the community. We have a lot to lose. And in fact, we're losing right now because Donald Trump is disingenuous about his engagement and his outreach and in fact i believe he wants to start a race war in this country wow let me ask you this amorosa you were attacked by many including me uh in terms of positions nothing personal and you took the heat and you took being called a sellout and all and then you decided that you were going to come with this book some say oh she's just selling books but you went way above and uh, beyond just saying something you really went and advocated how did you feel when you saw the president call you a low life and a dog after you had taken all of these arrows for him you know when he called me that dog I thought that it was clear evidence, one, that he has absolutely no respect for the presidency. It was such a vulgar slur. And can you just imagine if he would say that publicly, what is he saying about me and other African-Americans privately? It just really makes the point that Donald Trump is not equipped to serve in the role that he is in. In fact, I would say that he's unfit to serve as the president of the United States. He has completely taken the presidency to the gutter when he reduces this important office to name calling, to being thin skinned, impulsive. And as you know, in Unhinged, I assert that he is in mental decline. And that was on full display when he was attacking me over and over again in all of those tweets. And then he wanted to sick his entire legal team on me and my publisher. But you know what, Rev, I'm a soldier. I'm built for this and I'm ready for this fight. I am not intimidated or afraid of this president. I have an entire community of faith who is praying for me and undergirding everything that I'm doing. And I will say that really at the end of the day, the truth matters. The truth matters. And we will all come on the right side of this because this country has endured much worse. And African-Americans have endured much worse than Donald Trump. We'll have more of my interview with Amorosa later. But up next... You won't believe what Rudy Giuliani just said. <laughs>